What's going on? It's Jason here, and I'm going to go through my practice routine and what I do, my technique routine. I've been doing incredibly useful exercises for double bass by Dennis Whitaker, and I'm gonna get this GoPro on, so one moment, please. All right, and then we have a little bit of a different setup today. I've got my laptop here, and I'm actually recording my iPad screen, so I think that's gonna be a little bit better. You may be wondering why this camera is here. I actually shot this same routine last week, and this stinking camera, this Zoom Q2N 4K right here, that thing, the batteries died. <laughs> I don't know if I just have a bad batch of batteries, but it died uh, three times. Okay, so some of those must've been bad, but the, trying to stitch it together was such a headache and I just decided, let's just film it over. I do have the audio going, so we'll get a little bit better audio on my bass. And I'm gonna switch over to my practice app here, uh, Modacity, which I totally love. You can see I've got got 274 hours and counting in here. And I've got these playlists that I've created that have all the items in incredibly useful exercises for double bass. So uh, I will, since I have this recording here, you can see that I've got everything here is duplicated on Modacity. So uh, all the way down, except I have one thing that's called Tune Rosin Get Set. That's what I do every day. Maybe there's a better name for it. And then I don't know how well you can see this, but there are timings for every single one of these that I've tweaked. I did this last week and I think I gave everything three and a half minutes. Some of them take longer, some of them take less time. So I've tried to tweak these so that it comes out to a, an hour. I'm just trying, I could be longer, could be less but I'm just trying to have that discipline. So, uh, and I'm gonna talk a lot more than I normally would in my own practice session. I'm not, uh, I don't just jabber to myself uh, with, with <laughs> if I'm, if I, normally, but hopefully this will be helpful. Uh, I've got everything set and ready to go. So I can hit this button. So we're counting down three minutes. Got my bass rag, got my rosin, got my bass. And I mentioned this last time, but I actually do practice with a practice mute an awful lot. Oops, and pin slipping. Um, I got into the habit of it from living in cramped apartments with neighbors and not trying to be annoying. Uh, I don't need to do that anymore, but I'm still in the habit of doing it. And it there's something about it that kind of dials out. It sounds weird, but it like dials out the beauty. It, uh, and and we don't want that <laughs> mostly, but I do find that it just sort of focuses me on pitch and uh, just, I don't know, I find it to be helpful, so I still do it, but I'm not gonna do it for the video. I'll take this off right now, and I go into my favorite tuning app, Tonal Energy, for tuning. It's a great app. Uh, I don't use it that much these days besides tuning, but... <laughs> And if the smiley face is green, I'm happy. And if it's not, I'll adjust. Ugh, too far. There we go, A. Always trust my ears. Wow, good. And I got my extension here. This is a low B extension, by the way. So I go down, most extensions go down to this. C, I actually am able to go down to a low B, which is ridiculous because there are no low Bs written, <laughs> but it's fun. And I've found some nerdy uses for it. Normally, I don't want to. Yeah, you know, my rosin's feeling pretty good today. So I'm just gonna let it rock. I'm not going to add any at the moment. Um, I might later, but we'll see. So Dennis has this great just description. By the way, this is the Kindle app that I'm using. I have volume 17, which has all the exercises, but I would actually recommend, and I mean, get them all, they're great. Get whatever you can. But I would actually recommend getting these volumes in paper form because you can have both pages out like this. So the exercise is here, the description is here. For this, you can only have one up at a time. So, um, but the, the just there's so much thought put into this. It's really cool. So he just describes what's going on, uh, just kind of frames this all for you. Familiarize yourself with the centering exercise at the beginning of the book. For centering, I'm focusing kind of a little bit below my belly button and a couple inches into my body. That's where I'm focusing when I'm centering, which I believe I am uh, going to do in a moment. So 
we're just about to do some silence. I know it's weird to do a video with silence, but I think I only make it 30 seconds, so it's not too awkward. Uh, how did that go? F uh, sure, fine. Okay, silence. Breathe in through my nose, out through my mouth. I should really do that more often when I'm practicing. Uh, and every single one of these has these really cool uh, fun facts. I'm just gonna make sure I'm recording here. I, oh, I'm not recording. Now I'm recording. He says, hopefully, there we go. Okay, now we're going. Uh, sorry about that. Glad I glad I checked. I, I I am notorious for doing things like that. So anyway, silence here. Uh, it's a great way to. It, it, I just like the way he frames all of these, and he's got these different minutes, control, mindfulness, expression, uh, power, all that you're not focusing on. So what are you spending most of your uh, energy, your focus, your attention, what are you putting it to? And he has, he always gives credit where credit is due for these exercises and definitely sends you down some great rabbit holes. So Silence by John Cage, which I have not read, I should. And then the music lesson by Victor Wooten, which I have read, and if I Remember, I'll put a link in the description. Um, that is such an amazing book, but let's move on. I'm talking too much. All right, how did that go? Uh, yeah, that was good. Uh, I'm gonna try to be a little harder on myself with these ratings. Mark Gelfo, who came up, uh, Gelfo, sorry, Mark. Mark Gelfo, who came up with this app, the designer of this app, he uh, rates himself a little more uh, stringently than I do. Okay, now centering. So here are all the things that we're thinking about. And I've been doing this uh, both not playing notes and just, uh, I think that's what I did last week, but Dennis has notes and I think it's kind of cool to play these notes and kind of focus your, your brain on these different areas. So I'm gonna think about my feet, move up to my knees. Take a breath. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Lower back. Shoulder blades. Take as much time as you want on these. Take as many bows as you need. Face. Ah, uh, feel that jaw tension going. Breathe. Right shoulder. Right elbow, right wrist. I'm gonna take a couple bows on this because that's feeling a little bit fatigued from yesterday. Right fingers. Breathe, left shoulder, left elbow, left wrist. Ah, oh, out of time. Okay, I'm gonna to try to be good, otherwise I'll be here for hours, and so will you. So we'll move on for now, you get the idea. I should probably give myself a little more time on that or talk a little bit less on that one. Uh, well, uh, uh, three stars, okay, that's fine. Um, trampolines, I love this one. So this is all about, and I did this last video, but this is all about practicing these two different methods of using your arm to let the bow bounce. Generally, I think people find this one a little bit more understandable at first, and it's kind of like opening a door with kind of a strange handle, using your arm, pronating your arm. I'm noticing this white butterfly that likes to lay eggs and get little green caterpillars on my kale, but shooting a video, stay focused. Now we go down to the frog. Oh, so that's trampolines. And now basketball, this is much more like bouncing a basketball. And this will really work well 
at the balance point. So if you find your balance point, it's gonna feel pretty good there. By the way, a lot of people ask me about hair tension. And what I like to do is just get a decline. <laughs> I should turn my phone on silent. Dennis tells me to do that. I, I, you get to the middle of the bow and when you put the weight into the stick, you should be able to depress the stick to the hair but you kind of have to work to do it. That might not be the best description, but if it's like, this would be too loose, this goes down, right? So then my bow is gonna bottom out. If I go the other way, I'm not gonna go too far the other way, but if I go the other way, ugh, that's even a little bit too tight. Sometimes it's okay to be a little on the tight side in my experience, depending on weather conditions or that kind of thing. Sometimes it's okay to be a little bit on the loose side, um, but regardless, Somewhere around there is good. So this is gonna be comfortable, or at least it is for me, at the balance point. And then I start to lose control if I get here. You can see the bows kind of flooping around, so. And now like all these exercises, um, you, can, you can sort of tailor them to where you are. And I think of them all as very deep exercises. So they're simple, but they are things that you can live with for uh, years and decades and uh, let them evolve over time. So those are the two main motions, bounce at the tip, bounce at the frogs. You got trampolines, you got basketball. And now we're gonna practice transitioning from them. And this is the where, the challenge kind of happens because this motion, once we get to about here, hopefully you can see that. I'm starting to use my arm. And now I really feel it in all four fingers. Really feel like I'm dribbling a basketball. And we can move over, do it on the A string. And we can go back out here. Oh, I lost it for a second. Ideally, and I. Hopefully I do a better job when I'm not talking through this. You're trying to stay as even as possible because we need to have the control in all these different points. And I really feel, I don't know how well I can get in here with the GoPro, but I really feel like my thumb is acting with the same amount of energy as my first finger and the other fingers are along for the ride. So this motion, I'm talking about the motion at the tip, the trampoline is definitely the, the, the secret. It's not a secret, but the thing that I think can be a little elusive to people is what the thumb's doing. Versus here, it's really my whole arm sending energy into the string, but both of them, you're letting the bow uh, bounce and you're just sort of along for the ride. Sounds a little strange, but it's true. Okay, ah, oh, shouldn't give myself that high a grade on that. Okay, tonal session and just paranoid Jason. We are recording, yes, good, okay. Um, so this is a really cool one. I This was in volume one too, so I have recorded this one before, so we are, pitzing and hopefully I have a better camera angle this time so you can see what I'm doing better. I'm gonna get my bow out of the picture. So we're trying to take the way that the pizzicato works and translate that over to activating the string with the bow, or at least that's my understanding of this. So when we pits, when we pits, when we have the string here, we pull and we release. So we have it and it's like bow and arrow. We got it and it goes, right? We don't kind of just that's not a very effective pizzicato. We're not just like, you know, coming from the air unless we're doing some sort of special effect. We are on the string, engage the string, and pizzicato. So that's what Dennis is doing here with tonalization. And I love how he has things like this listen in the parts, has the fermatas all over the notes. It's very helpful. So we put down, and I'm listening to the decay. And I would normally not be talking. So I won't talk in the D. Let's just listen to how long this D goes. And I'm engaging. And that natural sound of the decay, we wanna see if we can replicate that with the bow. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So that's this first part right here. We just alternate. And again, you can do other open strings or the same open string or mix it up. Uh, it's, all, it's all good. So now we're going to pits. And we're going to do the same thing with the bow. We set the bow, 
we have the string and we let it go. So again, and set. I love to move it around like this. You can hear that I've got the bow grabbed. Grab is a bad word. I've got the bow, I've, I'm, I have contact. <laughs> I have to think of a better word. And then I release. So set, wait. That's a better word, Jason. Wait into the string. Cock the string like you're gonna shoot a bow and arrow. And let it go. And now I kind of whiffed that one. So I'm gonna try that again. And I'm feeling like I'm using the, the big muscles back here. And by the way, I may, if, if I end up doing all 16 of these, uh, which if, if you like them, I'll, I'll keep doing them. I may set up a camera here for you to look at me, but it might have to be another GoPro because uh, my batteries die or I'm limited in recording length and I don't wanna get too complicated with multiple files here. So anyway, we do the same thing on the D string, pizzicato. And then set release and then we we remove the pizzicato just setting and releasing feeling like you're using the back and even your whole body to an extent i feel like i'm almost turning to the right which is And the rest of the exercise, I'll speed up, speed up my, my delivery because oh, I'm running out of time. It's the same thing, but with follow through. And just like, just like sports or really anything in life, we're, we're trying to use our entire body to activate the string. And an important concept that I think I was in my, uh, how was that? Yeah, it was okay. Uh, Maybe not as good as there, but that's good. Um, an important concept, put this down for a second. I think I talked about this on the video that I ditched. So as we wanna have our bass playing resemble as closely as possible, regular life. So here I am talking with a GoPro on my head like a weirdo to this camera, apparently, <laughs> that's not on. But as I'm talking, my hands are kind of chest level right here. They're not way out here. They're not way over here. They're not way over here. They're just right here. And if I can get my bass playing as close to here, my center of gravity, this sort of, this sort of rectangle. I used to be a conductor. This is where you'd want to conduct to. You wouldn't want to conduct typically way up here or way down here or way out here unless you want to look a little strange. So just having this area where you're doing your activity I think is really important. And then also being in a little bit of an athletic pose. So I'm not leaning in any sort of weird way. I have my feet on the ground and I'm leaning forward a little bit almost as if I was going to jump forward. So if you can do that, and then when you have your base, whether you're sitting or standing, you just let the base make contact with you. And I'm just a little bit uh, active, leaning forward a little bit. Uh, again, another camera would probably help. <laughs> so, but not today. Okay, glowing tones. I love this. Um, uh, so we're going to take and we're going to play all these notes and you will hear, you may hear on this recording, especially if I don't talk over it, uh, you, you, uh, but you on your bass, if you're in tune, you will hear, and you have to listen closely sometimes, all of these sympathetic vibrations. So it's important to do them where Dennis is telling you on the page, but we start with this low G. That was pretty good. I have a little bit of a wolf on my G string, sadly. So. But you can hear. I can hear a little bit of, just a little bit. And you might not come through on the recorder, but. Now we go up to the A here. And I'm gonna deliberately, that was a little out of tune. I'm gonna go more out of tune. You can tell that's out of tune. Even if you turn the sound off, if you look at how the A string is reacting, it's like unhappy with me. Ooh, there it is. And something Dennis talks about in all of his books is making the string go fat. Both the E string 
and the A string are going fat. And we can hear, um, we can hear, uh, what's the other one? Except an octave up from there, I believe. So then we go on, we're gonna do B flat. This is the one that I have the hardest time hearing. Ooh, it's like a really high G. And uh, one other thing, I do, I always, I sometimes forget to do this. With glowing tones, you wanna stop the bow and listen. My friend Kate Jones is a wonderful bass teacher in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Talks about this sounding like a wooden bell and these kind of, doing these kind of exercises. So we're trying to listen for those rings. Ooh, no. There it is. Uh, which one? What is that note I'm hearing? Well, that one's not very successful today. Moving on. There we go. So that's that C right there. And we're hearing the G. We're hearing. Ooh. And I love the idea of glowing tones. That one is particularly glowing. Try to get your bass to sing. And we keep going up, we play a D. It's a little more of a simple vibration. It's really getting our D string going. Now open D, we're gonna have uh, D and A should be ringing. So you should be hearing those pitches a little bit. I love that one. All these and all these exercises have a have a logic to their sequencing. That one was okay. Um, all of these exercises have a logic to their sequencing, so they just build upon each other. Um, yeah. Moving on. Oops. Why did I leave that? Uh, spiccato. All right. Five minutes on this. So. We have many different types of spiccato, slow, heavy spiccato, medium round, light, short, sautee. Uh, choose one or two tempos to explore today. So, uh, and then this, and then beauty before power is something that Dennis has in here, very important. Uh, and he's actually put up here, yeah, you see there's, the power ranking is zero. So mindful, minutes control, Mindfulness expression, not so much. I really like the way that he organizes all of this. And this is just an F major scale. Uh, we, we start off by playing eight times per note, then seven times, six times, five times, four times, three times, two times, and then up and down once. So I'll just, let's just see what happens. I'm gonna go, um, let's see, what's a good tempo? Kind of slow, heavy. And you can notice where I'm playing for this type of tempo. I'm actually on this side of the balance point. Here's the, here's the balance point. Here's where I am. So I am just beyond this grip. Like here's the balance point, here's the grip. I'm just in this little sweet spot for this slow heavy. Oh, also as I go, I'm going to be playing flat hair. I'm not trying to touch the hair, but uh, get close and hopefully you can see, I'm gonna be playing flat hair down on the E string and the A string, and as I start to climb the bass, my angle is going to change. Here's where another GoPro would be nice, so you can see this. Um, but I'm going to start down here totally flat. By the time I get to this F, I'm gonna be tilted about like that. The reason why is, well, there are many reasons, we'll have to shoot a separate video on that. But here, if I was totally flat, it's too pecky for most circumstances. I'm thinking a little more horizontal there. I'm thinking a little more vertical down here. Okay, here we go. Mm -mm.
seven. I'm going to stop just so that you're not just listening to me play <laughs> scale forever. Um, but although I would recommend trying to get through it, although the most important thing, and again, beauty before power, like Dennis was saying, if you feel yourself starting to lock up anywhere or any tension starts to develop, stop and just sort of reset, get back, put your energy back at your center. Uh, and um, kind of, I find it helpful to give my level of muscular activation a number on a scale of one to 10. 10 is I'm so tense, it's unimaginable. Uh, one is I would be lying on the floor. Uh, and so where are you? So where am I? I'll do those sevens one more time. I'm maybe like at a six. So a good exercise would be, to, oh, that is, uh, f figure out where you are on a scale of one to 10, and then just try to like bring that down a number. So if you're at a six, see if you can be a five and really focus on keeping this relaxed, keeping your back relaxed, and thinking about big muscles, even though we're doing something that might seem like it's involving small muscles more. So I'll do sevens one more time. And again, the, the challenge is that every new note is now alternating down bow and up bow. So the first one's down, up, down, up, down, up. I'm trying to bring down my level of activation. And you, that was not completely even for sure. I'm trying to be as even as I can. I really want it to sound like. So the down bows and up bows aren't popping out. And the beauty of doing the e, uh, odd number groupings like sevens, fives, threes, is that you're landing alternately on down bows and up bows, just like Dennis indicates. That is an awesome exercise that I have to do every day if I want my spiccato to be halfway decent. Okay. Uh, one finger vibrato scale. This is new. Uh, it, it wasn't in volume one. So this is great for developing a beautiful vibrato on each finger and maintaining a beautiful vibrato through the shifts. So um, you go through using uh, different fingers I, and feel free at least my words, not, not anybody else's, but I, I would be okay and I am okay in my own playing to just not do the whole thing, just do a little bit, uh, just do one finger, not do four fingers. If I have a lot of time and as I've been practicing these exercises longer, I will do all four fingers oftentimes, but um, I'm, I'm gonna focus on just doing one finger. And I'm really trying to get a discernible wave in the sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can even count the vibrations if you want. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you can see I all of a sudden I, it got funky right there. And that's because, uh, well, this is a good exercise for developing that. Your thumb and your whatever finger is vibrating, I like to think of there being a magnetic connection between those. So like there was a powerful magnet on this tip of the finger and this tip of the thumb. That is a really good position for getting a nice comfy vibrato. As we get to the neck block, we have a couple of uh, challenges. One is that if we keep our thumb here, which is really good to do, and you want to be able to do that, all of a sudden our thumb is further away from our first finger, and we also have a little bit more of a balance uh, challenge, especially if you use a straight end pin like I do. Um, so one easy solution, 
and hopefully this comes through, is I'm going into thumb position, but low. So I'm taking my shoulder and putting it, I'm taking the, I'm, ta I'm letting the, <laughs> trying to use the right terminology, I'm letting the base come to my body. I'm not bringing my shoulder to the base, definitely not. I'm remaining like, like a, like a T, right? My shoulders are here, my body's here. And I'm bowing into the bass to let the bass just land here. So I find this exercise great for, for many things at many levels, as all of these exercises are. There's a lot of depth to all of them. Uh, this one, at this point, becomes a... a new level of coordination. Now, this is, too, I would not play a piece with that kind of vibrato. Uh, uh, unless it was a really s specific circumstance. I think that's too slow and very, definitely too mechanical and probably too wide also. But just for developing that, that's really good. Now, it's, now Another great thing about this exercise is that it works on vib vibrating in this, what I would call a perpendicular pattern or maybe parallel pattern. I maybe more, I should call it parallel, but I'm vibrating and my fingers are perpendicular to the strings. And so the fingers are over the string as I'm vibrating. So they're, they're in line with the string. Maybe that's a better term. As I get here and up, I can't, I'm not gonna play like this. That would be incredibly awkward for me. Uh, my hand starts to slant, my fingers start to slant. And, and so now I'm vibrating at more of this kind of an angle. So down here, I'm vibrating really parallel, I guess, to the neck. Here, I'm vibrating more like a 45 degree angle from the neck. Now the strange thing, if you're new to this, is that this really feels the same to me, although it looks different. And so good exercises for developing this are thinking about shaking a can of soda and really feeling that, th how these muscles are working over here. And then when you get up high, it's a very similar motion, but uh, so it could be like shaking a can of soda, like you're gonna try to spray in your own face. Nah, that doesn't really work. The, the one, the I, shaking a can of soda is great for the low positions. Once we get here, I find that just putting your fingers right here and practicing the vibrato motion, that's a really good way to develop that feeling because it takes the base or the, the playing surface out of the equation. And I think we can relate to these sort of non-playing motions, maybe a little more easily, because we've got all this baggage about this instrument and trying to do a good job on it and that kind of thing. So practicing this and then moving over is great. And then one last thing on this, and I will move on because my time is up. Uh, I'm trying to keep the vib vibrato, uh, vibrato, vibrato, as as constant as possible. So I'm not turning it off and turning it on, like shifting gears and different notes. I'm trying to keep it constant, which is easy to say and a little harder to do. That was okay. Um, string crossing curves. This was in volume one as well. So I will be brief with the description at least. There are, there are directions of string crossing that are easier and there are directions that are a little more challenging. This, which Dennis refers to as small curves, and this can be kind of a confusing uh, subject, just FYI, and I'm kind of bad at describing it. So um, small curves are You're, you're playing the same little bit of bow. You can see, or hopefully you can see, I'm basically just using this little chunk of bow right here. And so I can really do quite quick string crossings. It's a very efficient motion. Big curves are the opposite, where you're here. 
And this might not be quite as obvious. And again, I, I, I'm always disappointed with the way I described this. To me, it feels, at least, that the down bow note is here and the up bow note is here because I'm playing here and then it's like I'm losing this little bit of string. We're here. It's kind of like I'm on either side of this little area and it's just very comfortable. So that was like a three out of 10 at best for description. So read Dennis's description in his book. It's much better. And if he's filmed a video on this yet, definitely check that out. So this is just going through and giving you different uh, fingerings and different areas of the bass to practice these motions. And I'm trying to keep everything an elegant gesture, as David Allen Moore likes to talk about, LA Phil bassist, USC bass professor. So we're trying to keep everything. With a little curve. We don't want straight lines in our playing. travel a little further for the big curve. Small curve. And I'm really thinking about being relaxed all through the body especially going down into my legs. I'm trying to change the bow with my whole body. This is line four. So see, he's just building on each exercise. These nice big intervals. buzzer or my dinger. Uh, so uh, notice th th throughout the entire, this volume, all the volumes, center, center, center. Bring your energy back here. It's, uh, it's such a good reminder. I should write that in all of my music no matter what because I get all worked up and I'm doing the opposite of centering a lot of times. So that's great. And then you'll discover as you keep working through these that uh, you'll, you'll do them in different registers. You'll do them up in thumb position and that kind of good stuff. Uh, yeah, it's okay. I'm trying, uh, so long tones. Okay. I should have enough time to do this. And I, I actually successfully did it on the video. I, I screwed up and I always think that this will never work. Uh, and then sometimes it does work. So bring up my metronome and modacity at a hundred. So we're going to go two clicks, three clicks, four clicks, six clicks, eight clicks, 10 clicks, 12 clicks, 14, 16, 18, 20, and back down. And you'll see what I mean. And Dennis has a good video on this, by the way. So if I run out of time, I'll, I'll stop and just check out his video. So here we go, two, ready. And so all the bow, it's gonna feel a little fast for this first one. Now, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm trying to use all the bow, one, two, three, four. 25, 50, 75, 100. Two, three, four. One, two, three, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One sixth, two sixth, three sixth, four sixth, five sixth, six sixth. Jeez, try to say that 20 times in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five. Try to be as proportional as you can. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Big muscles. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Good God. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, got to use a little faster, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, I can be a little more, 4, 5, 6, 7, I thought I could stop concentrating so much, I can't, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm going to cheat, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, center. Oh, good. That was the longest five minutes of my life. Um, center at the end. Don't feel like you have to take all four uh, notes with full bugs. Okay, practice break. You're going to come with me to the kitchen. Whew. I would normally get through this okay, but... It's warm here in San Francisco. I have the window closed for my neighbor's benefit. Ugh, there's my sourdough starter. Uh, I'm seeing that jerk white butterfly trying to lay his eggs. I have found caterpillars in these pots right there. And so uh, I've isolated them from the other, <laughs> other plants and put butterfly nets up. And so it's a little bit of a science project going on there. Okay, since I'm taking a break and folks take breaks when you need to, it's totally fine. It's gonna think about lengthening, oh, reaching up, oh, extending a little bit. And uh, yeah. I'm bumping that uh, that exercise. There's a little bit too much bumping going on uh, on the long notes, but I did make it and I cheated at the end, but I think that timing would actually work out okay. Uh, so we're gonna give ourselves four. Might be a little bit generous, but bow tuners. Okay, so we're looking for optimal bow placement as we go up and down. So we start here and we're going for a ratio. I think I talked about this in the last video of one to seven. So one part string here, seven here. I think I'm getting that math right, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> so, and now when we play this note, we have cut the string in half, right? Here's the open D. Where's that? There it is. <laughs> there it is. So that's halfway, and any string 
you'll get you know, the octave. So now that it's half the length, the ratio of seven to one is going to be, uh, we have to adjust for that ratio. So here, and then now we adjust. And now we go up high, and we need to adjust even closer. Back. Open. Now that high note. And uh, Dennis talks about this here. Francois Roboff calls the ideal tone you're going for a uh, son premier, premier. Oh my goodness, my French. Um, the Suzuki, I might be getting this slightly wrong or totally wrong. Diamond tone is something that Suzuki, the famous violin pedagogue, talked about. And I, I take it, I take what I'm going for here, according to many people. What I'm going for is a sound that is full and has uh, enough treble in it. It has just a little bit of brilliance in the sound, which is uh, what I believe Suzuki was talking about with diamond tone. And we're like this, there's a little, it's a good sounding note, but hopefully that comes through on the, on the zoom there. There's just a little more diction to that note. There's a little more uh, sizzle in the note. Now, that's too much sizzle. <laughs> For, unless you're doing an extended technique, probably. So, and then the rest of this exercise is focusing on that, going through various permutations, nice big intervals, kind of simple motions, gradually building on each other. So we'll do A1 now. So it's going to be, again, listening for that sound. wasn't 100% happy with the intonation on all those E's, especially the first E was really stinky. Uh, but I, uh, sometimes you gotta make a call. What are we focusing on here? Are we going to keep going? Or are we going to perseverate on that E? And I made the call to keep going because this is, I'm, th I'm thinking, we're generally thinking both hands when we're playing the bass, but this is predominantly right hand oriented, right? I think we're safe to say. Okay, and then A2 is very similar. And so on and so forth through the positions. Great exercise. All of these are are um, well. This is beauty. This book is beauty uh, expression and beauty. Yeah, kind of like uh, sharpening the tools needed to be expressible. That's a weird turn of phrase, Jason. And beautiful, my sharp tools for expressiveness. But it's true. And there are many more of those exercises. So we'll get to those later. Color and dynamics are different. So the idea here is keep the arm weight constant. So you have speed, weight, and placement. Okay, quick, uh, very quick lesson in this. We could talk forever about this. You have your weight. How much, how light, how heavy, how much arm is engaging the string. Oftentimes it's quite a bit on bass, much more so than violin, viola, especially, and even cello. Um, speed. Right? Placement, what we were just doing for that last exercise kind of reedy sound, the kind of brittle sound. So the idea with this exercise, and I love this, Dennis talks about, I play this exercise often to remind myself of how many colors are available to me on the bass. It's true. I've noticed that the the since I've been practicing this exercise. So, and slashes, this is, you know, we're limited in the, in the <laughs> symbols we have in a string, and it, just in music more or less. And so th these are used often for tremolo or repeated notes, but here Dennis is using three slashes to indicate fingerboard. And by the way, I have an extended fingerboard, so this will look confusing. And I don't know if you can see, you almost certainly can't see this on the video, but this is actually an extra piece of fingerboard that the guy who owned this before me put on. So this would be the edge of my fingerboard. So even though it looks like I'm way the heck over the fingerboard, I'm only slightly. So that tone, I think it was fairly covered. And I'm going to keep the weight the same and go, and actually I should be using more of the bow. Let's use the whole bow. 
Now we're going to use half the bow at the midpoint. So I'm moving closer to the bridge. Here I was here. Here I'm here. Now for the third bar, I'm going to be right up on the bridge. I'm trying to keep the weight the same. This is deceptively, or maybe it doesn't even seem deceptively, maybe it just seems challenging. I find this one to be uh, fairly challenging. Okay, so, well, I'll just play through a little bit of it. So, first bar, second bar, and notice I'm taking a little second to reset the bow. Now we're going to go back to midpoint. So we speed up the bow, and then we go back to here. This time in the G string. Midpoint. By the bridge. And you can hear my bass, you can hear that I have a wolf on the G. It's just like a little bit of an unhappy open string. Bass sounds great, it's just got that. So notice I'm putting a pause between these. I'm not sure if that's what you're supposed to do or not. But if I don't put a pause, I get a little bit of this scrooshiness in the sound. And that's something I, I generally am trying to avoid. So I'll have to talk to Dennis, or I don't think he has a video out for this. If he does, just watch that. Um, and I should go watch it if, <laughs> if it's out. But I have been uh, just kind of like resetting the bow for that. So that's what I've been doing. How was that? Uh, yeah, three. Tapers are super cool. Um, this is one of the most common things you do in music and even in a sentence, you end. A word, you don't end oh, like that unless you're really uh, doing something dramatic generally. Things taper in language, certainly in music. And so um, he's got different ways of executing these. So you're going to use four fifths of the bow. And I believe I did this last, last time too. So, um, so we're using about that much bow for the first note and then that for the last. And I'm trying to kind of be as, as uh, wide in the dynamics as possible. Always try to widen your range, especially this volume, expression. And even though some of these notes are, are pretty sour, especially as I'm talking through it, I'm focusing on the taper. Now, I might do that again to try to get the pitch a little bit better, or maybe repeat a bar a couple times to get the pitch a little bit better. You don't want to not play in tune. That's a, a, a bad thing, right? Um, but uh, you, uh, the focus is, is the taper. So we're going to do the same thing now for B, but we're separating, we're changing bows. So we're going to go. And notice all these exercises relate to each other. So we had the earlier where we just set the bow. Same thing for this. I set. seems crazy. I'm trying to feel it in my back. And I have a tendency to go uh, on that last note. I'm working on that. I have a general tendency, not to turn this into a therapy session about my bass playing, but I have a general tendency to kind of punch notes, something I've had my entire life. And every time I listen back, I think, oh, so that's my goal for this week. Actually, in my practice journal here, Practisma, um, that's what I wrote down this week. This is a cool thing, by the way. I'm doing a review about this, uh, and there's no way on earth you're going to read my 
handwriting, even if you're in front of me. But what I wrote was being too punchy on starts of notes and bow changes. And that my solution was record myself to fix it. And it's, it definitely helps. And then I record, I record, listen, I'm dissatisfied, record again. And that helps. Okay, C, uh, this is a little more challenging. We start up, but we want to get the same type of sound. So you set, you've got the, uh, the weight, you've got, I'm torque, torquing, is that the right term, into the string. <laughs> And now, avoiding a bump, quite challenging in that one. We'll save that one for next time. Ah, well, I didn't get that far, so three. Um, glowing bow scale. Now, normally Modacity will tell me, time to take a break, I love that, but we're nearing the end of our session, so I'm going to keep going, keep it rocking for now. Um, so this is, the, and we're, we're playing with these elements, right? We've played with placement. We've played around with speed for getting sound in certain ways. Now this is an exercise focused on getting uh, varying bow speeds. So we're going to change dynamics with bow speed. Small, slow, small bows for piano, fast, large bows for forte. Expression, all these things, that's kind of our main uh, focus. But coordination on this one too, that's for sure. Okay, so we're going to start. And we're always trying to go for the extremes. And so right now I'm noticing uh, two things. One, I need a little more bow tension. Two, I haven't put any rosin on and I think I need a, a swipe. This is my Leatherwood Bespoke Rosin. This stuff rocks. This is the 40% hydration. Is that the right term for this? Uh, which is great for San Francisco here in July. It's a whopping 72 degrees, so not hot, but for San Francisco, it's a little warmer. So I, I don't wanna go too sticky. Ooh, there you go. Tim Pitts, Rice University, he says three swipes of rosin equals three hours of practice. Or I think he says that. Sorry, Tim, if you don't. So I did two swipes, so that's two hours, I guess. Here we go. Monitor your tension levels. as we start to get up here, so, uh, pretty flat hair. I don't know, if, uh, pretty flat hair here. By the time we get up here, pretty tilted. 45 degree angle maybe, something like that, that we're sitting up there. Um, pushing the extremes, arm motion. Uh, there are many different ways this situation works over here, this right arm. So um, depending on the stroke you're doing, a lot of the time, you're gonna feel faster notes like that, almost like being an opening and closing of the elbow. However, you're kind of, am I getting too nerdy here? I might be getting a little nerdy for this. Um, because we're trying to uh, move, because we're trying to change the amount of bow we're using on this, I feel like this is a better one to think about actually just moving the whole arm faster. And maybe there's a little bit of opening and, but really I think, um, I think I'm just, I'm just kind of like using more of my body to move the bow. This would be a great one to practice in front of a mirror as is just about everything in life. So as you're down here, you're gonna just think of moving the whole arm to do this. And it's interesting when you start to think about this, to just feel like, kind of notice how your body, it's almost like, boy, this is dweeby, but it's almost like I'm doing this little dance back and forth to get this going. That's not exactly what's happening, but that's kind of how I feel. Maybe that is what's happening. If I, I don't think it's voluntary. I think I'm just focusing on moving this apparatus kind of as a unit, and I sort of do this, this happy dance as a result. That's strange. I should practice that in front of a mirror. Uh, I will. Good one to do. Uh, two. I'm gonna be hard on myself today. 
Okay, big wiggle. This is really cool. Um, so the point of this one, we have control. We have just to make sure I've been having problems with this computer. So we are still recording. Good. Um, uh, control for this one. This is a really cool one for developing um, all kinds of bow strokes. The, the idea is to keep this to the extremes. So we're going to um, keep the regions of the bow separate throughout the whole exercise. So the tendency is for when something like this is happening, uh, and so the first bar, you can see this here, boom, ba ba boom, ba ba boom. Uh, the tendency for people is to just kind of have in the middle, which is fine, but you really do want to develop your ability to do different things in different spots in the bow. So the big wiggle, in, in my understanding of it is, Really, I don't want to use the word push. Stretch your capacity for using different areas of the bow. So we go. And by the way, this ties in very well to trampolines basketball. The motion that we need to do out here is very, there's a lot of pronation in this. I really feel my thumb activating and my first finger activating. Here, it's definitely that basketball kind of feeling. And now here's here's the thing. It is although it's 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 more challenging to get power out here. That motion is more dexterous out there. It's easier to do, I think. Dick a dun, dick a dun, dick a dun. It's just kind of like um I just got to make sure that I'm engaged with the string, predominantly with these two fingers, for the way I play at least, and then, um, and then just a little elbow here. This is pretty comfortable to go and to do the motion here, like right around the balance point. But try to see how close you can get to the frog. It's not going to be as comfortable, but it's going to stretch your abilities. Surprise, surprise, I do it better when I play slower. Uh, you should probably be practicing slower, says every teacher you ever work with. I think that's a Lauren Pierce quote or something. She said something like that. So really. If I'm, if I'm biffing it, like I kind of am today. Um, pause, think. Pause, think, feel the motion. You could even pause here if this is. Because really, um, for passages like this, I really like to think about the two short notes belonging to the next long note. So the phrase isn't da da da, da da da, it's da 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 da. Da, da, da. That's how music would most typically flow. So uh, that that so uh, putting a thinking pause here is fine because you're separating the phraselets out from each other. And then I didn't get far on this one, so you'll do um, like. And this area, just in general, uh, developing the capacity to do more things in this area of the bow, it, it's, it's just going to be nothing but benefit for you. So a lot of these exercises, you may have noticed, do send you down right here. How'd that go? Didn't go well last time. Didn't get well, go that well this time. Got to work on that one when I'm not recording, I guess. Sixth position harmonic songs. These are just a whole lot of fun. Um, yeah, this is good. You're definitely in an extended position. If you feel any pain, stop, rest, return to the music, or wait and go back to the next to the next day. Up sixth position. If you're not familiar with these Raboth positions, three minutes is not enough time to describe it. But it's the position. 
where you got your one octave, your second octave, and your third octave. And so if you put your thumb up here, you have, you have triads. And the cool thing is, uh, by just playing around with those notes, you can do all sorts of things like scales. And that sort of thing, you can also, uh, you can play all kinds of songs. So Dennis has a whole bunch of songs here, a, a couple things to think about when you're up high. That one to seven ratio, you wanna keep your bow pretty close to the bridge. You can hopefully see the amount of tilt I have on the bow, which is quite a bit. And then when I put my fingers down, I actually like to um, almost like touch the fingerboard. You probably don't have a fingerboard up here because mine's extended. But even if I didn't, I kind of go on the side of the string with one, two, and even three. I find that more accurate than trying to touch the top of the string. I kind of tend to fall off. And I, I, I think there's something about the fleshier part of the finger actually making it more likely for those notes to activate. It's my crackpot theory, or maybe someone told me that sometime. But anyway, so we're gonna try to have a nice, beautiful diamond tone, som premier kind of sound. really get the string spinning. And this is great just for developing your comfort being close to the bridge. I call this world's trickiest twinkle. Uh, yeah, so there, uh, that, uh, anybody walking by that didn't know anything about the bass wouldn't think that was nearly as challenging as, as you and I know it is. Okay, so uh, we'll go through a few more lightly row. Ah, Jason. <laughs> okay, I'm getting tired. I'm losing focus. Think ahead, Jason. There we go. I'm trying to prep the next note. Trying to be as expressive as I can. That's the point of this volume. <laughs> Notice I'm biffing the same note. The reason, this is not an excuse, it's just, well, yes it is, but it's also why it happens. As you go across the strings, you actually do have to reach a little further to get the same spot on the string because the fingers will have, try to do this without falling over, the fingers will have the tendency to actually go a little flat just because your arm, this would be easier to do on a front facing camera, but, um, so you have to feel like you extend a little bit, especially on the A string. Uh, that wasn't so hot. We'll go down a little bit. Uh, okay, glowing tones again. So we're starting to wind down the practice session. This is our last actual playing. So we're gonna go through, I'm gonna try to get through them all since we've already done this. Leave the bow on the string. Play as many times as you like. Really try to get those to sing. Love this exercise. I can hear that. Hopefully you can. Here's my challenge note. Oh, I got it. It's like this really high note. It's like my, my open string ones are the most out of tune. Oh wait, open. Again. There it is. That's a really cool one. There it is. That was flat. Now you can hear it. You have to make sure you don't touch the, 
the G string. Because the harmonics on the G string. Then. And don't be afraid to move them around, really get it glowing. Make sure you're keeping your A string clear. Good. Open G. I think I gotta go to my setup guy because I'm getting a little bit of rattling here. But then. I'm playing around, just kind of testing it, flat and sharp. Cool, and since I have a few seconds remaining, I don't think I did this in the last video, but for this last silence, what I'm going to do is, I like that Dennis gave this a key, that's great. Uh, what I'm going to do is keep my hands, maybe I did this, no, I don't think I did this in the last video. I'm gonna keep my hands here, and your bass might be shorter or taller than mine. I think it's actually better if it's a little shorter, but this is a very symmetrical way to kind of center. So, yeah, that was actually pretty good. Okay, I'll be nice to myself, four and a half, or four, I guess. Okay, sounds, breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. I feel like I need a different sound to end a session like that. So, all right, folks, hopefully you're finding that helpful. Um, these have been fun to do. I'll keep them going if you like them.